the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The cords of Sheol entangled me, the snares of death confronted me. My stress I call upon the Lord, for this temple be heard my voice. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. We say on the that I should You have equipped me with strength and made my way blameless. Stages according to the commandment of the Lord in Camp 
that after thee, that there was no water for the people to drink. Therefore the people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. And Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water. And the people grumbled against Moses and said, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried unto the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, Pass on before the people, taking with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock of Horeb. You shall strike the rock, and water shall come out of it, and the people will drink. And Moses did so, in the sight of the elders of Israel. They called the name of the place Massah and Meribah, because of the quarreling of the people of Israel, and because they tested the Lord by saying, Is the Lord among us or not? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, and the hope of the poor shall not perish forever. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapters 9 and 10. Do you not know that in a race all the writers compete, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly, I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest, after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. I want you to know, brothers, that our fathers were all under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, with most of them, God was not pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. This is the word of the Lord. We stand. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, remember my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voices of my enemies and mercy. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? O Lord, be very serious, that you may hear him. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 20th chapter. who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And to them he said, You go into the vineyard, and whatever is right, I will give you. And so they went. Going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing. He said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They said to them, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. 
And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more. But each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last only worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first, and the first last. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. We'll now sing our sermon hymn, number 555. Notice we're only singing the first five verses at this time.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. When you know a person that's waiting on you at a restaurant, are you more likely to give them a bigger tip? Maybe it was your child's first job at Pizza Hut, or a grandchild who's trying to earn a little bit extra money. So you go to the restaurant and you want to give them that really big tip. Whether or not maybe they even deserve it, regardless of the job they really did, right? Being, being a server like that is one of those jobs where you may be able to get bigger tips if you hustle, if you know how to interact with customers. On the other side of the point, we've all had these servers who are not very good at talking with people, or maybe you got them on the time where they were having a really bad day. And you might not give a very good tip to them then, right? On the other side. What about those restaurants that take just all the tips then and pool them together and then divide them between all the servants? Equally. Is that fair to the one who works harder than another? Can't even seem to get the water out to the customers? You know, this parable of the workers in the vineyard has us thinking some of these same thoughts, struggling with what is the right thing to do at the end of the day? Were those workers right or were they wrong? It's not that those who were hired at the beginning of the day were cheated out of the pay, was it? They agreed to work for a denarius. At the end of the day, they got paid a denarius. So what was the problem? Well, the problem came as they were looking at the others, right? They were looking at those who worked nine, six, three, and those who worked only one hour, they're also paid a denarius. And so those who work all day begin to groan. Those who didn't work a full day didn't have a problem, didn't have any complaints at all, right? They rejoiced and took their payment for a full day's work, regardless of how many hours it was they actually worked. But it's those who work the whole day, through the heat of the day, and they see everyone receiving the same wage, then they get upset, right? They start grumbling, because they're thinking that somehow they deserve more from the master than what they receive, right? Can the master give more to those who work less? Yes, that's what he did out of his mercy, out of his kindness. It's like you giving a bigger tip to a server you know, even though they got your order wrong. While we may understand that concept, what this lesson is also pointing at is really confusing to a lot of Christians. This, the story seems to also be talking about when the workers, when Christians receive the call to faith, God's election, then people start raising all kinds of questions, right? Because we know that God elects some to salvation. But we believe that God never elects anyone to condemnation. How does God know who to elect and who not to elect? Well, that falls into God's foreknowledge. Yes, before God even began a moment in time of creation, He knew that Adam would sin. He knew what you would do in your life. He even knew what you would wear to church this morning. Before one thing was even created in this world, before a single moment of time had occurred. And yet God still created the world. And he worked out his plan of salvation from before the world began as well. He knew that Jesus would be conceived, born, suffer, die, and rise again, according to God's plan and his knowledge. In Christ, God wants to save all sinners from condemnation. We learn that from the scriptures, right? Whoever believes in Jesus Christ will be saved. 
God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever might believe in him might, should not perish but have eternal life. God does not desire to punish the wicked, but that they might turn from their evil ways and live. Those are verses scattered throughout Scripture. One, John 3 16, a verse that everybody knows. What does that have to do with our salvation? Our God is holy, and He desires to save all people from sin and death. He desires to give all people eternal life. This is why Jesus came to the world to save sinners, to save us. And He did. Now there is forgiveness for all who believe. That's the proclamation of God's good news for sinners. Those who are crushed by the weight of their sins and the burden of trying to earn their righteousness are following God's commands by their own works. Well, we're called by the Holy Spirit through the gospel to cast aside our worthless works and believe in Jesus Christ for our salvation. We see that in the parable. As those who worked less than a full day were happy to receive a full day's wage. It was a gift to them. They had not earned it. It was those who worked a full day who were jealous. They thought they had earned a denarius and more by their labors. They wanted their obedience to count for something. But God does not Factory in our works when calculating whether we have done enough to earn heaven or not. That's because no one can do enough to earn heaven by their works. And yet this is good news for the world. But not everyone accepts it. Many have heard the good news, but they reject it. They deny it. So the key points to remember in, in thinking about this doctrine then of, of God calling and electing is that whoever is saved is not saved by some merit on their part, but only out of God's pure grace. And those who are lost, we're not destined by God to be sent to hell before eternity, but they go there by their own fault, by their own denial, by their own lack of faith. And this we see in the parable for Jesus today, in the other reading. There were so many that rejoiced at the abundant mercy of the Master in giving them this precious gift of a day's wage. Well, there were those who were grumbling about being made equal with the lazy laborers. Well, they worked hard and long for their wage. There's still many people today who think that they earn God's mercy by how they live their lives. God must have seen something good in them in order to call them by the gospel. But that's not right. That's not what the Bible teaches us. Those who accept the gospel, believe in it, know that they have no righteousness in them on their own. But they accept the righteousness of Christ as their own. The righteousness which he gives freely through faith. We believe that we have been washed clean from our sin by God, and that when we eat and drink of Jesus' body and blood, we are receiving the forgiveness of all our sins, just as Jesus promised in his word. Even the faith, even the faith of believers comes from the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yes, Jesus has opened the kingdom of heaven. Really, the kingdom of heaven only stands open for those who believe. The problem is that not all believe, because not all accept the word of God and receive the gift of faith. They reject it. Paul gives as an example the Israelites and their disobedience as they wandered around in the wilderness for four years. They all come out of Egypt after the tenth plague. They all passed through the Red Sea on dry ground. 
They all heard the word of God as they gathered around the mountain and heard the thunder and saw the lightning as God gave his commands to his people. But they didn't all obey God's word. Remember, as Moses came down the mountain, they'd already created a golden calf and had fallen into idolatry. Many, many more times they rebelled against God. They grumbled against God. They complained about being drawn out into the wilderness to die. And yet that's what happened to them in the wilderness. They rebelled. They were killed by some plague or some other punishment from God. That whole generation died. Because when God said, here is the promised land, go in, and I will give it to you, they were afraid. They feared the power of the current residents, even though Moses and Joshua urged them to rise up because God himself would fight for them and keep his promise to give them that good land. They rejected God's word. They died. Now, this sermon talking about calling an election, maybe you have a few questions on that, and that's good. We can have a class on that some other time, let me know, and I'll let you know when we start it up. The difference between the two sides seems small, but it's really pretty significant. Some teach that since God has elected some to salvation, then obviously he must have elected the rest to condemnation. But that's not true. Because then that would mean it doesn't matter what we do here on this earth. No matter how good the bad person is, they can never earn heaven. And no matter how bad the good person is, they can never be sent to hell. That's not what the Bible says. One of those sides really brings, both of those sides brings false security, doesn't it? False hope, false faith. It's not the teaching of the Lutheran Church. We say that God only elects to salvation. That means if one is saved, it's only by the grace of God through faith in Jesus Christ. It's God's free gift of grace, not by works. But if someone is condemned, God is not at fault. But the person is condemned by their lack of faith, by their rejecting God's word and promises. They doubt that God was working for them for their eternal good. So guard your heart from thinking that you have anything to do with your salvation. God did not choose you because he saw that you would do this or that work, that you would be elected to this or that office in a congregation. Don't think God has elected you because he saw something good in you. No, God did not do it that way. You did not choose God, but God chose you in Christ. You could not contribute in the least part to your conversion or your salvation. You didn't use your free will to believe because you didn't have any free will before you believed. You were dead in your sins. You couldn't prepare your heart to receive God's grace because without faith, you could do nothing but sin. You were lost condemned sinner. You were the last one chosen by God to work in the vineyard. But he's put you to work. He's accepted you. He's made you first in the kingdom of heaven, giving you the abundant blessing of his great mercy. Don't become proud thinking you're among the first and then end up being among the last. Be diligent in the use of the means of grace. Be fervent in prayer. Battle against the ways of this world. Listen to God's word. Believe it. It is calling you to repentance and to faith. You cannot earn God's greatest blessing. But you can only receive it as a gift from God, from his gracious mercy. Amen. And may the peace that passes all our human understanding keep our hearts and minds to Christ Jesus, our Savior. We stand, we confess together the nice and the truth. Father, we believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. We have been one Lord Jesus Christ, 
Em nome de graça, Santa Maria, e graça de Sonora e Fórum Amorosos, Pai de Pai, Pai de Pai, Very God, Very God, e graça de Maria, being a one substance with the body, I am the law of things for me, who for us men, and for our salvation, being now from heaven, and was in the heart of God, the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and he was the Amen. And he was crucified also for us in the conscious life. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the and he will remain in the liberty to judge both the living and the dead, who seem to not have an end. And I will be in the Holy Spirit, the Lord in eternal life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is by the prophets. And I will be the one of the Holy Christian acts of the Church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, you call your church to fruitful labor in your vineyard. Cause us to recognize our unworthiness with such a gracious gift. Rejoice in the salvation we have in Christ and remain steadfast in your word. For in your mercy, we are your prayer. Father of all, you have built your one holy church upon the rock of Christ and ordered her according to your gracious will. And still in her pastors of godly wisdom, to know your word thoroughly, and in her people, a patient spirit that waits on your heavenly provision. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, bless our congregation, that we would love one another as Christ has loved us. Lead us to give generously in support of your mission here and abroad. To pray for our enemies, to put away all earthly grumbling and to bask in your gracious providence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Master of the Vineyard, you call us by your grace to work and live in your kingdom, not as slaves, but as sons of the Most High and brothers of Christ. Work graciously through the teaching and example of fathers and mothers to preserve the faith of children, help them grow in Christ until life's end. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God, you have established all authority upon earth to be a blessing, not a burden. Remember those entrusted with civil authority here and in all places, and enable them to serve with godly wisdom and integrity. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Creator God, you have given your children the blessing of vocation. Remember the unemployed and underemployed, especially those suffering severe financial distress. Lead them to productive work and continue to provide for their earthly needs. Father, we also remember in our prayers Bob Rossoff, who's been put on hospice. And remember also Ryan and the baby who have an uh, impending delivery. Father, also the family of Celia Thomas. That in their grief they may rest in the joy of a blessed reunion in paradise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you have made our way blameless by your word and absolution. By your holy word, you have equipped us to continue in the labor of our many callings. Now, O oh Lord, satisfy our hunger and thirst with your precious sacrament. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear us, Heavenly Father, for the sake of Christ Jesus, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We'll now receive our gifts and offerings. <laughs>
Please stand. Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. 
to stew in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to him, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all.
Thank you. 